Greetings fellow adventurers and welcome back to the dungeon. I know it's been a long time since I've had you here, but I wanted to talk to you today about the final book that is going to be released for D&D for the year of 2022. And that is Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen. So join me as we go on a journey to the mythic, well-beloved land of Kryn as the heroes will be staking their claim against the evil Dragon Queen Takesis and her five dragon armies as she seeks to conquer the world. So Kryn is a very well-respected and loved setting in D&D. It's actually been around almost as long as the entire hobby has, actually. It's been involved in video games, board games, novels that have actually been around for 40 plus years, and of course the actual Adventure D&D modules when many of the heroes fight in what is known as the War of the Lands, which is the big massive conflict between ultimate good and ultimate evil in this setting of D&D. And that's also where this actual adventure in 5th edition will be taking place as well. The heroes will be going on a 1st through 11th level adventure where they will start out in the province of Salamnia as one of the Dragon Queen's dragon armies comes in to seize and claim the land and it is their job to stop them, protect the people, and bring the fight back to that dragon army to stop the Dragon Queen Takesis from gaining a valuable resource that will result in her victory while having to contend with draconians, fallen knights of, the, of Salamnia, and of course, the big bad guy himself, Lord Soth. You heard it from here, folks. Soth is going to be back in this one, and you should be scared out of your minds to have Soth back. So I just wanted to show you what actually all is going to be coming in this. So first off, we have the base version of the book. As you can see, you got a draconian riding a red dragon with Soth being all spoopy and scary in the background. You also have the alternate cover, which of course features big Lord Soth himself, with a black rose on the back and the fact that they actually had consulted with an actual metallurgist to get the burned metal engravings and wreathings designed onto the book. It looks really fantastic. But they also decided to release something else, which was known as the Dragonlance Deluxe Bundle, which comes with another alternate cover that is nice and shiny. It looks like a, looks like a foiled magic card. It's super awesome. But it also comes with a unique DM screen for the Dragonlance setting. I'll just let you guys take a quick look at that to see how awesome that is. It also has unique rules for random encounters for the Dragon Queen's dragon armies when your characters are adventuring. But the piece de resistance for this deluxe bundle is that it also comes with a board game. Dragonlance Warriors of Kryn. This is a miniatures cooperative war game where the players will take on the roles of heroes in massive battles between the Alliance and the Dragon Armies. And you set it up differently every time and you follow scenarios. This is supposed to represent the mass battles that can take place in the War of the Lands, which can A, be played completely by itself, but it can also be used in tandem with many key battles and encounters in your Dragon Lands Shadow of the Dragon Queen campaign. And I'm looking very much forward to implementing that into my personal campaign, which is also something I'd like to talk to you all about. So one of my Spelljammer campaigns is coming to a close. I had a great time with it. It was a very stellar adventure, but I will be kicking things off with a Dragonlance campaign, and we will be returning to the classic sword and board, sword and sorcery, big fight to save the world D&D quest that everyone has come to know and love, and admittedly make a little bit of fun of, but still admit that they enjoy it. And the session zero for that one will be on the 17th from 4 to 8 p.m. where I'll be sitting down with people who are interested and talking about what's going to be in the campaign, what type of uh, characters would be best suited for it. And then the first actual adventure will be on New Year's Eve from 6 to midnight as we roll in the new year with Dungeons & Dragons. But every session after that is going to be from 4 to 8 every other Saturday and it's 20 bucks to play. So I wanted to talk to y'all today about this new product that I have already read through. I'm super excited to actually have out and just I'm really looking forward to playing with it because it comes with a lot of awesome stuff. First and foremost, there's the fact that each of these books comes with a map, a legit map of the continent where the adventure is gonna take place, which just, in my opinion, just gets your imagination juices just a pumping and a flowing. It's amazing. I love this map so much. But also, 
The book comes with rules for how to make characters that are ingrained in the setting of Kren. It'll tell you how to make characters that were maybe former Knights of Salamnia or characters who belong to the mages of high sorcery who are wizards that channel their magic through the three moons that orbit Kryn. It also comes with a lunar sorcerer subclass, so you can have an innately tied in spellcaster. There's also unique backgrounds and feats that tie into the adventure to make you feel more ingrained. It also comes with a unique race option, that being the Kender, which everyone has come to know to love and love to hate. They're the halfling equivalent in the Kryn setting, and I'm really excited to see some people roll up some Lunar Sorcerers, some Knights of Salamnia, and honestly, I just want to I want to see a Kender Bard who just sits there and mocks the, Dr the Draconians from far away with some French taunting. So that's actually all I had to talk with y'all about today, and I'm looking forward to seeing all seeing all of y'all in here. And as always, drink some more coffee and play some more games. <laughs>